thanks, Steve, for the opportunity. Um, much like Vicky's is a, a kind of overlooked figure, probably overlooked for her gender, um, called Brontia Kula Pinnell, who ran the salons that uh, clipped other male artists and uh, congregate in, in Vienna. Uh, and this was written with Mother's Day in mind, which might be a qualm or balm to quote someone who went earlier. Okay. When titles attendant parentheses bloom and still and bend preliminary study for another still life tease the yearn yarn out from eyelash to lower the rib cage, tying the two together. Can there really be cause for three letter L's to be packed so close together in a word like that? Bloom and still and bend. How still do you need to be? How lulled by the picketed word? How outstate? My mother arranges flowers for her church and tells me that an odd number of stalks will always look more effective than any even number. But I associate irises with the word widening, and the clacking sound the stems made the one time I carried them to your doorway, hands filled with hopeful gifts, and someone waved to me across the road in greeting, and limb locked, I had to wave a response with the whole side of my body and, and pivot, which caused the irises to shake their heads. And my mother explains that their flowers should remind me of Greek myths and rainbows that were in a kitchen cleaning up spilt turmeric and I am not in the mood. <laughs> Good flowers tie a room together. Your mother darning with her back to me, facing the surface of the sun itself. The birds of the rib cage slash eyelash parenthesis approach your hands, hopeful of gifts. Elmi at a pallet's length. And what is with the snow, BKP? What is with the irises? What is with the apples that look bringable, CF fists or laundry? And what is with the bird cage and the turned back? The good hostess ties a salon together, and the doors to the study swing open on their hinges, unoiled, and spell out the letters B, K, P quite distinctly, and the door to the birdcage swings close on its hinges, unoiled, pronounces the letters B, K, P indistinctly, kinderportrait in Betchen, and the downiness that comes with children, such young birds caught in quiet blankets, fledged glossy lustig, wing hot and tooting, we cover their cages with the silk and give them mirrors for distraction's sake. And we come across self-portraits in brown rooms, brown studies where the palette is the most alive thing for miles. Atelier interior after Staffelei, ein ausgefertigt Damenporträt, Edgar Herzig, Schwester Colin Pennells, question mark. A beaky preen, a parrot hand scaled over as hands scale and crack with paint. It would be better to wash these before the guests arrive, as birds of a feather tie a good room's togs, ether, hither tethered together. My only woman with blue headscarf, date unknown, my Sylvia with a bird cage circa 1905, my sitting 1907, my still life with a red elephant 1920. See, the circa C stands in for the nookness of shadows, and never has a room, nor its elephant, looked more crampable. But here I am, looking at your arriving, as though beyond a door with a pane of dimpled glass, or with eyes thumbed from sleep, glazed in frame and parentheses, circadian eyelashes that open doors with dimpled, frosted glass, Tell us again about the one with the kettle, the parrot, and the hand valued at two in the date unknown, where Darman Academy has all the lilt of me turning in the street at the sight of you, irises beneath my arm shaking their heads, apples clenching in my hands. My mother would tell that naked woman, boasting what I choose to see as a halo, to stop slouching. It is a squared off halo, a pancake sun, with all the attendant anxieties I have for naked women and the correct plural nouns. Halos with an E? Halos without an E? It is me you're looking to fast forward, apple handed with all these irises and birds on the brain and moon and jokes about honey. We should be uneven and top heavy like prose crammed into frame. Unmanned for a good while yet and the birds are as good as we've ever got going when skin can skim like that, lifting up the upper or rather lifting off the upper layer of paint, the dermis with a flat handled thing that reminds me of hummingbirds more than it does of knives, leveling away the grey shirt, lift off, right annular area around the cathode ray, inhalation, attendant jokes about breathing, anxiety about the use of an, getting emphatic, haptic, and dually breathless when I'm sitting like with parrots in the other room. And parrots might learn how to laugh, as painters' models might learn and must learn to breathe undetected and unhalfed angels without skirts and earthy as in muddied open doors by association. And I've never had a parrot with a halo before, and I dream of training one to say halo into a telephone receiver. <laughs> and the telephone is shaped like a daffodil head, clarion call waiting. We use it for listening to the opera and for tapping the blunt, remarkable lips of our parrot. 
and the wires buzz with arrangements as I'm attending my unwhistlerish, unhamishoy, grayed out, shoulder turned, mother nipped son uncoddle. And the mother sits on the surface of the sun. No parrots there, fewer elephants, but the squared off halos as might rise above kitchens or headboards. Let's talk about that beyond the finch wire and the telephone, the serried flesh about your hips, the hand beneath the lift, the signature, the shadowing, red hair, apples, russeted with elephants no bigger than fishes. I have it on authority that the idiom to make a mountain out of a molehill equals aus einem Möchen einer Elefanten machen, wherein elephants crumple, gnat born, and there's still a buzz on the line, and husbands' watch chains and watch chains catch the light in ways different to the metallic joists of my paint box. I mean hinges, one bit working only with the other, nothing to do with being in each other's shadow, but all about light, the complementary soft fish, kettles, parrots, etc. Mealed mucha, there for the singing, and flight is the least remarkable thing about them, marbled and alabastered and bounceable, and not entirely uneasy to trace.